I want to take this opportunity to review some high points from the Career Services pamphlet, Designing Your Professional Resume. After all, it's the resume that gets your foot in the front door. First, I want to cover three basics. The purpose, the most common type of resumes, and formatting of your resume. The purpose of the resume is to call attention to yourself as a qualified candidate for the second step which is the interview. It is the resume that gets you an interview. If you submit for a job and you don't hear back that's normal. Do not call and say, have you gotten my resume? Because the expectation is you understand they will work through the resumes at their own speed. Most, if not all, business today simply do not respond to the resumes of unsuccessful candidates. From their point of view, it's a, an unnecessary waste of time. And time is something that businesses hold very dear. The most common form, of course, is a chronological resume. And it's organized in reverse order with the most recent education the most me recent experience, etc. It's similar to a set of emails that have been forwarded. The most recent at the top, the least recent at the bottom. The formatting of your resume, the pamphlet that you have received Designing your professional resume gives you a example of what to include in your resume how and what it means. That is the critical piece that you should examine and work from. Now I do have special concerns around these areas and let me walk you through the first one use of industry vocabulary my assumption is that after four or five years you know the vocabulary of your trade of your profession and you want to demonstrate the use of that specific industry vocabulary in your resume. A second key item is action verbs. And you can see from the uh, pamphlet from the Career Services Center that there are a whole range of action verbs and my advice to you is begin the sentences with action verbs. These are two examples from the set of sample resumes that are provided. Look at it. Developed, organized, designed, interpreted, managed, responsible, prepare, responsible. Is another example. Developed, organized, designed, interpreted. These are all from the pamphlet and are all correct. As this is a document presenting yourself to others, it must be absolutely typo and grammatically error free. One typo, one grammar error, in all likelihood it will go into the trash. Two pages max, one page preferred. Why? 
the first line of looking at a resume is not the hiring manager. It will be HR. And they have, they may have a hundred applications and they simply do not want to take the time to read a lot of stuff. Remember that. This is an introduction which is a little bit longer and a little bit more detailed than your elevator speech. Oh. Well, if you have a very high GPA and this is, you know, your first job search after your degree, put your GPA there. If you have less than if you have less than 3.0, I would not put your GPA there. Your res references. Don't put them on your resume. Don't write reference available upon request. That's obvious. But contact your references in advance so you know that they will give you a good re reference. Now, how are you going to find uh, uh, jobs? Well, job fairs are out there, and that's when you would need a very qual a quality paper with your resume typed on it to hand out. Otherwise, you will be applying online. Now, let me share my learnings with you about online. Sometimes it just says, attach a resume here. But there are other times when you have to fill in an online form. And you would work from your resume to fill in the online form. The other thing that you should be very aware of is that if it's a medium to large company, your, refer your resume is scanned for the specific wording of the job announcement and for the specific use of the skill terms related to the job. And the more hits that happen, the more likely you will have your resume read by HR. Once HR has gone through them, they will make a decision if it should go to the hiring manager. That is a very common approach which means your cover letter has to be spanking perfect because the person who will read your cover letter will be the hiring manager. I'd also like to point out the online source of monster.com. The reason I'm pointing it out is I got hired into Shell, Royal Dutch Shell, Global Shell Oil from my a application on Monster.com. Really? And what will happen is that Monster.com will send you new job search results automatically based on the information you have inputted into that system. It works. Finally, each resume and cover letter has to be crafted to a specific job. There is simply no such thing as a generic resume that you just keep sending out by the dozens. It has to reflect the skills being asked for, the competency sets being asked for, and it takes a lot of time. Don't make the mistake of a friend of mine that paid $15,000 to a search firm who created a generic resume for him. 
he sent it out to 200 companies and never got a response. I hope this 10 minute video has brought some understanding to you about the document designing your professional resume. Good luck when it's time for your job search.